Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In my crypto portfolio, I still have two coins I haven't talked about them before. One is Chainlink and the other one is VeChain. So in today's video, I want to talk about the Chainlink first. As one of the most important pieces in the blockchain architectures and the ecosystems, many of you may have heard of it, but not everyone knows what exactly Chainlink does. So today, I want to talk about What's the Chainlink? What makes it unique? What's the current technical chart? And my personal take on its price prediction. Okay, so recently, Chainlink has been in the news quite a lot. They had a lot of partnerships news, like first with the US Department of Commerce, then with Parley Market, and a lot of other blockchain projects as well. And since August, its price has been appreciated a lot. So why all the blockchains and enterprises want to partner and integrate with Chainlink? As you may know that Chainlink is built onto Ethereum, but it is not a traditional layer 2. A traditional layer 2 is designed to scale Ethereum by moving massive transactions off-chain, process them, and then settle them back onto the mainnet. So the process can significantly lower the cost and improving the transaction speed. But Chainlink is different. Think of Chainlink is like a data and a communication layer that's plugged into Ethereum. For example, its CCIP, the Cross-Chain Interoperability Protocol, is designed to pass messages and values across different blockchains. So let's say if one chain needs a real-time data, Chainlink is served as a middle layer, basically like Chainlink is saying asking, Hey, what's the real-time data do you want? So let's make a handshake request first. I will fetch it, right? I will verify the data, and then I will deliver it back to you for use. So here is really the key. Smart contracts over the blockchains on their own can now interact with the outside world. Without external data, they are basically closed systems. But with Chainlink, it solves this problem. It brings the real-time data onto the blockchain using its decentralized Oracle network, so smart contracts with the blockchains can truly interact with the reality. Let, let's do another example. In DeFi lending platforms like AV, when someone wants to borrow USDC by putting up ETH as collateral, how does the contract know the real-time price of ETH? That's where Chainlink's price feeds come in. Instead of relying on one exchange, Chainlink using their nodes to pull data from multiple exchanges and also some other resources, then aggregate the results through what is called an aggregation contract. It calculates a single trusted data point and feeds it back on chain. So this way, when ETH drops below the liquidation line, the contract automatically triggers the liquidation. That's the true automated financial system. But Chainlink isn't just about price data. It has other modules as well. For example, it's VRF, the verifiable random function. It's like a transparent lottery machine, ensuring NFT raffles and blockchain games are fair enough. And of course, the latest CCIP cross-chain protocol, which I had just talked about, enables secure transfer of data and value across different blockchains. So here, I want to particularly talk about CCIP in DAS because it is so important. The CCIP is especially powerful because it is not only covering all the major blockchains, but also expanding into traditional finance. Chainlink has a lot of enterprise partnerships. If you have interest, you can go to their official website and take a look. Within all of these partnerships, a classic example is the Chainlink's partnership with SWIFT, the backbone of the global banking communications. Normally, bank transactions remain locked inside their legacy systems. But with Chainlink and its CCIP, a bank using SWIFT can send a message that also executes on a blockchain. For example, setting a tokenized bond. This means banks don't need to rebuild their entire infrastructure they can use Chainlink to smoothly bridge into blockchain. Why does it matter? Because the financial world 
is moving towards the asset tokenization. Bonds, stocks, funds, even real estate. So tokenization means faster settlement, higher liquidity, and a lower cost. For example, a traditional way for a bond settlement usually take T plus two days. However, with tokenization, this can be done in just minutes. Of course, for tokenized assets to move onto blockchain, banks must need a secure way to connect, and the Chainlink plus Swift are exactly for this. You can pause here and look into this chart in depth. So, you can see why many people say Chainlink is essential for Web3. It is not a smart contract platform itself. It is not competing for users. Instead, it is acting as a data pipeline and a connector for the entire blockchain world, bridging on-chain and off-chain systems. That is why it is often called one of the most important pieces of the Web3 infrastructure. All right, so that's the short overview of Chainlink Fundamental. Now let's talk about its price action and also the current technical trend. So let's look at the weekly chart. From the weekly chart, we can see Chainlink is now forming a very classic cup and handle pattern. And how long this pattern has been built? Let's see. From 2021, May 2021. So it has been forming more than four years. So if it breaks out successfully, the long-term log chart, which is the current chart, shows that the potential target is around, let's see, if we move, if we draw a line here, and we move to here, the breakout position. So the long-term potential target is around like $200. Okay. So let's switch to a short-term chart. If we look at the regular chart, right? In the shorter term, if we draw another line, similar line here, and move to the breakout point, then the target shows us that it's around $65 to $70. So let's move back to the log chart and then look at these four moving averages. They look also very bullish. We can see the green line. 20 week moving average has been already crossed above the yellow line, the 50 moving average, and the red line, 100 week moving average, which is a strong uptrend signal. If I would say that the current chaining price movement will be like, will first to reach us a little bit and then finally break out, out of this cup and handle pattern. And it could have a potential retrace back to this trend line and then shoot up to the first target $65 to $70. Alright, so then let's switch to the monthly chart. The, in the monthly chart, the 20 month moving average is also across above the 50 moving average. And if we see MACD, I, I just make a circle here so we can easily see that. It's also turning positive. The short-term trend line is across above the long-term trend line. So this also can show that and give us the further confirmation. Chaining could complete this cup and handle pattern and break out very soon. And then we can aim for the final target around $200. Again, my personal strategy is not to wait for the absolutely top. I will follow my own exit targets like taking profits along the way to secure the gains. Just like what I said before, everyone's risk tolerance is different. So you need to set your own price target. Don't panic sell and don't get too greedy. Stick to your exit plan. All right, so that's it for today's video for Chainlink. If you think this is very helpful, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel and drop your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about Chainlink? I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.